ring oiled bearings have been used extensively during the past 100 years. But so far, not much basic research has been done on them. They're used in pumps, marine applications, and colliery winding gear, where a simple, self contained, and maintenance free lubrication system is required. They're also used as safety systems in the bearings of expensive machinery. At Leeds, we have built a simple form of the ring oil bearing to study the fundamentals of the lubrication process. It is hoped that this will provide guidance for theoretical analysis and the development of design procedures. In the centre is the shaft, and the bearing which surrounds it has a cutaway section on the upper half to allow the oil ring to rest on the shaft. The bearing is loaded vertically upwards. The lower part of the oil ring dips into an oil bath. The tachometer here will measure the shaft speed up to 2000 RPM. We'll start the shaft rotating. The bearing is lubricated by the ring by viscous lifting. At first, there is no ring slip. As the shaft rotates, it causes the ring to rotate and to draw oil up from the sump. Some of this oil is deposited on the shaft and so lubricates the bearing. It then drops back into the sump. Lubrication in this range is called boundary lubrication, where there can still be metallic contact between the surfaces. Ring speed and oil flow follow shaft speed. But there comes a critical point where the ring slips and loses speed, yet oil flow still increases. The reason for this is that an oil film has developed between the ring and the shaft, so the frictional driving force is reduced. Then the oil flow drops too. At higher speeds, the oil flow begins to increase again, though the ring speed is still dropping. Lubrication in this range is a mixture of boundary and hydrodynamic. Oil flow steadily increases through the low point of ring speed. Lubrication now is fully hydrodynamic. Further increase in shaft speed causes an increase in viscous force driving the ring, but the rate of increase of the ring speed is less than it was with the boundary lubrication and metallic contact. This experiment was done using a ring with a medium machined inner surface. Now we'll repeat it using a rough knurled ring. You'll see one difference in that the ring gets up to a higher speed before it slips and this causes a web of oil to be drawn up out of the sump. In this case, the ring speed remains fairly constant after the initial slip, whilst the oil flow continues to increase. It was a knurled ring that was being fitted to the bearing you saw at the beginning of this film. It's going to be used on a pit head winding gear. By theoretical analysis, we hope to be able to predict the oil flow to the bearing and so generate design procedures for ring oil bearings in the future. <laughs>